Is it that time again? I think it is for the Kid Anka Fet Vlogs. Hello, everybody, and welcome back. Okay, so this episode is just going to take off right where I left off the last time. Um, oh boy. Uh, this is kind of interesting for me because I personally, like, hate having to talk about this one particular part now, but congratulations, you've made it all the way to 2020 and 2021 with the information of what's happening in 2022 and my conclusion. Okay, so let's start. Uh, 2020, uh, people that were, went to Teddy Con for, for, in 2019, were excited to see about what was going to happen in 2020, minus all the bullshit that happened with 2019, which is, when you think about it, kind of mild compared to 2015, 2018, and 2017. Yeah, so, there's a whole, like, the security breaches... Those were just mild fucking events compared to everything else. So we really can't... I'm, I'm not going to say it was terrible, because it wasn't. There was a lot more stuff that wasn't that bad. And there was, like, things that could have been improved, but that's all minor shit compared to 2018 and and the sexual assault and shit and uh, not wanting to ban someone who had been arrested for rape, or the person, or doxing people, or even bringing people, uh, bringing celebrities to, or people that work with celebrities to uh, an event without the consent of the people. So 2020 hits. Everyone is really excited, and they're they're wanting to can't wait for the next TeddyCon. However. 2020 hit us with the pandemic, and boy were those fun two years, as not it been. So, 2020, people uh, are told to go and buy your tickets for this con. I was the first person to say how I have reservations. I was like, uh, uh-uh, no, nah, I'm, not, I'm not for this. Even though I had a free ticket, it didn't matter to me. The problem was... How are you holding a con during a time where people are dying from a sickness that no one knows what the fuck it really is? It's a virus that is killing people. And their only thought process was, we're going to have Teddy Con! Like it was fucking, fucking Oprah. Like, like she's just introducing John Travolta or some shit. It was really stupid. It was really, it was really dumb. And it was... A point in time that I realized that the front runners for TeddyCon really needed to take a chill pill and actually realize what type of opportunity they had. Because they obviously didn't realize their opportunity because they were too busy trying to um, gain that popularity and to keep their convention going. Now, CapCon had happened in March. Uh, and I was unable to go to Capcom, but I was able to go to KatsuCon, which is an anime convention. And when I went to Katsu, it was fun and everything, but everyone you could feel was looming the dread of this pandemic that was coming. Because at the time, it was only in China. And it had been in China for about five months. It had spread way past China after... Actually, it... No, no, no. It spread outside of China by that point, because my cousin passed away from the from the virus. So, and he passed away in in March after contracting it in December. And he, all he did was go to fucking uh, Germany. Shit. <laughs> so, but uh, the situation with the pandemic was was serious. It was a time in which people knew that this is probably not the best time to be trying to have a convention. Teddy Con didn't care. Their main goal was to go out and have this con, goddammit. You are not stopping this convention. 
So people bought their tickets, and some people uh, were reserving their rooms. However, I noticed that the hotel didn't sell out as fast as it as it once used to, because when tickets opened up, that hotel was packed in seconds. This was not the case with this one. Oh no, 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 no! It wasn't this. It wasn't that at all. And I was shocked because my theory was was that. The reason it wasn't packed is because people were like, what the fuck are they doing? The TeddyCon should not be happening this year. There's a pandemic. We don't know if it'll be over by that point. It wasn't. And they tried to hold it in 2020, and it was a gargantuan fucking failure. What happened is, is that uh, before the con even happened, this is months before the con, when people were still getting their hotel rooms, TeddyCon did something really stupid. I don't know who made the deal with the hotel that year for 2020 or what, but the hotel is a 2.5 star hotel. It was a days in in Allentown, right near the airport. It was, it was, it was, the Teddy Con was there. It, shit. Uh, it was near, it was near the airport. However, the problem with this hotel is it's a 2.5 star hotel 2.5 star there i can give you a list of things that were fucking wrong with this hotel when i first stayed there in 2018 uh i i don't know if i in the newest ver i don't think i put it this in the newest version but when i stayed there in 2018 and got into my room I always checked my room meticulously because I like to make sure that nothing's amiss, there are no bugs or anything, and if there's anything, it, to make sure there's nothing I have to report. Ooh, I thoroughly checked the room, I didn't see anything until I moved my bag into the corner where I was going to have it, and I noticed that there was a red stain on the floor, but this is not like your normal red stain because it was like, it didn't look like soda. And whatever it was was thick. It whatever it was that had landed on this floor was thick. And the person and whoever and I looked at it, it was not soda. It was blood. <laughs> and when I say red, I mean it's like reddish brown. Like it like it had dried and no one cleaned this fucker up. And there were footsteps from that from that puddle all the way back to the second bed that was in that room so i go what the fuck is that so i i trail it all the way to the second bed and notice how it stops at the bed and i pull open the covers and there's a grape stem i know you're like what the fuck type of scooby-doo mystery is this yeah i don't know uh i reported it but there was also like a gap between the air conditioner and the top part of the ceiling because it sits in the wall. However, the gap is like this and you can clearly see the outside through that fucking gap. So it tells you that the con was not prepared. Like this this hotel was not the greatest hotel. They had a fire pit whenever they, they uh, during the con and whenever they lit the fire pit in the yard, the smoke would come right into your room because there's no fucking blocking it. There's nothing there. There's a gap like that it, right there in the fucking room. And it like it was definitely a fucking issue. And at one point we had like like weird bugs coming in because of the fact that the smoke was scaring them. It, they were trying to get away from the smoke. It, it, it was it was ridiculous. It was ridiculous. Um the hotel didn't serve meat on weekdays, so if you were planning to get breakfast at the hotel, the most you could get was potatoes, cereal, uh, waffles, uh, eggs, and that was it. They only served meat on the weekends, and it obviously looked like the staff that was the, the maid staff was doing um, double duty for that, and it was really stupid in my opinion. I was like, how the fuck does this make any type of sense? Mind you, that's not really a big deal, but you don't charge what they were planning to charge if your hotel is not up to par, if it's not up to snuff. So what happens is, is that the convention decided that they, that they were still going to use this hotel. When I called to get 
uh, my hotel reservation. I again, I I shouldn't have to state this, but I am. All accounts and everything that I say are that are happening is alleged, because again, there was no court case or anything that happened, and there was no jury to prove that any of this was true. The only thing I can do is give you my recollection of things that happened, and my recollections, regardless of the fact, would still count as alleged. Uh, so, yeah, this would still count as alleged, even if I give you the affidavits from, not affidavits, but uh, testimonials from other people, it still counts as alleged, until proven in the court of law. Uh, yeah, I just want you guys to know that. However... Getting back to the story, um, there is, oh boy, uh, they like, ugh. I called the, the I called the hotel because I wanted to book a room. They, the girl didn't know how to book it because she didn't have the code or something for the computer, so she got the manager. The manager and I are talking, and it was a civil conversation at first. But I can tell he was getting agitated for no reason. And I couldn't understand his agitation. But he was being an absolute douchebag for no reason. There was nothing to, prom to, to provoke this. But his agitation just made him even more of a douchebag after a while. And what happened was, is that there was a, a line that was said. Like a, uh, uh, he, he goes, oh... Uh, so, the hotel room will be, um, what did he say it was? I, if I'm not mistaken, it was about $800. And I go, excuse me, how much is it? He says, it was like 850 something dollars, I think, 50 odd dollars. And I go, wait, wait a second, hold on, why is it so high? And he goes, what do you mean? I was like, I didn't pay half of that. I said, I paid less than half of that at the last time I was there. Did something happen that made the price skyrocket all of a sudden? Like, is there a specific reason for why it's so high? And he goes, well, la and mind you, mind you, this is unprovoked. Completely un unprovoked. All I ask, is there a reason for it being so high? <coughs> that was my only question. He gave me more information than I was expecting. Entirely more information than what I was expecting. I just wanted to know why the fuck the price was so high. He then told me that Teddy Con had spent there, had uh, told him that they were they were buying out the whole hotel. Which they here's the thing about conventions, right? When you buy out a hotel for a hotel takeover, you have to pay a certain amount of money up front that covers every fucking room. I'm not joking. That's how it works. I know this because I've tried to put, create a convention here, uh, and we were doing a lot of work for that. So, yeah, that's, that's just the thing. We were just really fucking annoyed by this because... Because, like, different hotels, uh, because where we are in Pittsburgh, we still have Anthrocon that happens. So trying to get uh, an event started in Pittsburgh is really hard because Anthrocon has such a shitty reputation. And that shitty reputation has gone around to all the fucking different hotels. And thus, any type of kink scene has a hard time getting things done because of that. So, yeah, this is, th that is one thing, right? Well, that's what I discovered while trying to start my own convention. But this pricing doesn't make sense. Because he's complaining that TeddyCon didn't, uh, TeddyCon paid for all the rooms. They, they gave the flat amount to buy out the hotel for that weekend, right? They gave the amount, what happened was is that some people canceled in 2019 and the hotel did not inform the staff nor anybody else that there were any free rooms. So you had a situation where 
mofos were were coming to the the where where these motherfuckers are claiming that oh well well uh we can't we can't uh 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 charge regular prices we have to charge double because they didn't use up all the rooms last year that doesn't make sense you knew that the rooms weren't taken up some people had canceled last minute last minute is either a day before or a week before and and from what he was saying, it was a week before. So instead of telling Teddy Con, who would then tell us, so that we would be able to take some of the rooms, right? People would have canceled their, their hotel rooms to get a hotel room in the main hotel. But the main hotel didn't tell anybody. Which is strange, because they did it the year before. See the problem here? So the year before, they informed everyone that, oh yeah, we have some free rooms. If you we have we have free rooms for you guys to rent for this convention. So if that's the case, then why are we pretending as if that's never happened? And the 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 hotel is blaming TeddyCon for it. What? Nah, homie, that's not how that works. And I told this guy this. I says, God, I was like, dude, that doesn't make sense. I was like, so you had available rooms? Yes. Last year? Yes. And you didn't tell anybody about it? Well, they should have known. Uh, that's not how the fuck that works. What do you mean? Well, how would we have known if you didn't tell us? Like, the whole point is you to tell us so that we are able to buy the available rooms if the available rooms are not being sold to the people going to the con it makes no sense that you're angry that they didn't rent out those rooms you got the money for it anyway it, it i was like how many rooms were not were not uh used from what i counted about 13 um I, no because this is from my ex uh my observation from the convention due to the fact that some rooms just didn't have garbage bags outside of them because at TeddyCon what they would do for people who wear diapers they have it where mind you there's a no messing rule so that's one thing you, like all your wet diapers that you put into this garbage bag are then picked up and then thrown into the trash into the dumpster in the back so if that's the case like I kept seeing rooms that never got any garbage bags. There were never any bags put on their door or anything. So that means that that they probably didn't have anybody in them or didn't have any ABs in them. It had to be one or the other. But throughout the whole time I was at that convention, I never saw anybody come out of these doors. And I never heard any noises or people talking. So their hat so they were empty. But I was on the second floor. I don't know if that goes for, like, the first floor. And that's what I thought was interesting. I thought that this was fascinating because usually they would tell you that these rooms are available. They didn't do that. And then they blame Teddy Con for it. So what do you do in that situation? Like, seriously, what do you do? Do you blame the con or blame your own stupid ass for not fucking telling anybody? He chose the latter. <laughs> he chose the former, I'm sorry. Um, he, he just blamed the con. Uh, he blamed the con for the fact that these rooms weren't taken up, but even though he didn't release that information. So I go, you didn't tell anybody, but you're mad at the con for not selling... Well, they said that they would sell them out. Yeah, but if you have available rooms and no one knows that those rooms are available, how the fuck are they supposed to fill them? And so it doesn't make any sense. And so this dude and I are going backwards and forwards. And I made the comment of, you, you, so you're charging everybody double because you're a shitty manager and you don't know what the fuck you're doing. Because had you knew what you were doing, you would have easily, easily just said, yeah, well, we need, we need to fill up these rooms, guys. Can, so can you let these people know that, that we have available rooms? That's fucking thinking. Uh, that's using your noggin. But that's not what he did. He just blamed everybody for the fact that no one got the rooms. Be like, that fucking made sense. And I'm just like, you you have to be an idiot. You have to be an idiot. Because only an idiot would get mad for this. 
I'm sorry. You don't have a viable fucking reason to be angry. Especially not when you didn't do your due diligence. It's just the cold, hard truth. Like, you didn't do your due diligence, so thus, no one got these rooms. This guy gets so fucking mad that he starts yelling, You want to talk to Philly? You want to talk to Philly? I'm like, what the fuck is wrong with you, dude? I said, is this professional? I was like, what? how is this professional? He was just so angry. And so I just said, okay, fine. I'll talk to him. I ended up getting, and I wish I could have found it, but I got, like, this really, 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 like, condescending email where it was like, you were causing trouble for us or some shit like that, and uh, we had informed everybody of the, uh, of the price hike. Informing people of the price hike does not make the price hike make sense. Let's just put that out there, and I'm going to be clear to say that fucker again for the people in the back so they can hear me. Posting about the price hike does not make the price hike make sense. The price hike made no sense. Not for a 2.5 star fucking hotel. When I heard, when this guy said this, I said, fuck you, I'm not paying this. Take my name off the list, please. I will go and get my hotel down the street where I am fairly priced by someone who is not as fucking incompetent. So that's what I did. And I had to cancel said reservations because shit hit the fan. But, um, yeah, I just straight up said, fuck it. No, I'm not going. Uh, I'm not I'm not going to stay in that hotel. And this guy was so mad. He's like, I don't even care. I'm like, you kind of do because you have to care because of the fact that you are in the situation where you have a bunch of people who need who need rooms, and you want to sell them. Yes, they're buying it out. It makes no sense that you're angry about this. You made the money. And then some. It makes no sense. I do. And this is where, where my theory kicks in. Again, this is my theory and opinion. I think this man was making more... I think he was making more money than, than we knew on prostitution happening in that hotel. I think that that was the case. Because him de- being angry about the available rooms, that's the only thing that made sense with those guys that kept trying to come in that I talked about in the previous episode. That's the only thing that makes sense. Other than that, his anger for what he for for what he was like what he was angry about made no sense. But there is one part that I forgot to mention. During that conversation, I asked him about payment and I says, okay, so I just pay this when I get there, right? I says, you're not going to pull this out of my account before I get there, are you? Oh, no, we definitely are. Excuse me? You have to pay this by, by August 15th. August 15th? Why August 15th? We aren't going to be at that convention until October. Why the fuck am I paying for this in, at, at, uh, in August? Because this is an absolute guarantee. Guarantee for what? So, whoa, hold on. You're trying to trap people into, into going and staying in your, in your hotel because only a few people have backed out at the last minute? I was like, that's a little bit strange. That's strange. Why are you mad about that? I says that you are pressing this shit again. Why are you making, why are you mad about this? I was like, that doesn't make sense. Why are you mad about this? I says, it, it's, it, mm, that's why I thought about it. And so I said, why I thought of my theory about him making more money off of prostitution than he does off of, off of regular guests. And because I'm guessing he charges them a little bit more and they give a pretty diff, decent or hefty tip. And he probably gets a shit ton of money on the back end. That's what I'm guessing. Again, that's a theory. So, like, take it or leave it. Uh, like, that's that's my personal opinion. Again, it, it, that's not a fact, but it it's some it's the way I feel on that one. Uh, he then was like, "Yeah, these are guaranteed that we're having the con." 
I was like, that's not a guarantee. So I'm paying you $800 before... I says before, and I'm paying you eight hundred dollars three months before the con, or two months before the con, because you're scared of people backing out at the last minute, even though you got your money for the convention. That doesn't make sense. And then he's like, "Yes, it does." He says it's an absolute guarantee. I was like, "You do know that we're in the middle of a pandemic, right?" So if we're in the middle of a pandemic and the government tells you to close your ass down, you're gonna close your ass down. No, 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 no. They can't stop me. They can't stop you? Homie, you are a hotel chain. You are not even... What the fuck? And that's the moment I realized this dude is not all here. He believed he believed that he was way more powerful than he was. That's when your managerial job at a 2.5 star hotel has exceeded the levels of bullshit in your own head. He... This dude was a fucking jackass and i i could not fucking stand him so in the long run the whole situation came out uh i like i said i backed out and i was like no i was like this this is not smelling right and a lot of people had refused to stay in the main hotel due to that so i ended up producing an episode where i said that and i think you guys can probably find it around that time back in 2020 where I stated that I personally think that Teddy Con should not open that year. Because I was like, because this is a grand opportunity to find a better and bigger venue. I was like, they've been hosting in the same place for over six or seven years. They have good standing, so why not allow them to, why not go to a different place? And that's exactly what they did. They went to a different place. And they that was the hotel that they had planned for, for 2021. A week before 2015, uh, 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 not 2015, uh, a week before uh, August 15th of 2020, TeddyCon announced that they were no longer going to hold the con that year due to the fact of the rising pandemic numbers. And it seemed like the, the days that we thought the pandemic was ending was coming back since the numbers were rising again. And I believe that was the rise of Delta. I could be wrong. I believe that was right. That was the Delta strain that 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 at that point, um, because we hadn't reached Omicron or anything like that yet. So, yeah, I th- believe it was Delta. So the situation was just blowing the fuck up, and they realized that that was a a real bad problem for the convention. So what did they do? They stopped the convention and then hosted a brand like said, guys. So. You can get a refund, or you can let it ride for the next con. Your choice. Some people chose refund, some people let it ride. Went for the next con. 2021 comes around, right? Pandemic is still going. <laughs> it's, it, we had started 2021 thinking that the pandemic would end. January, nothing. It was still going and still strong. February, still strong. March, still strong. April, still strong. May. We're having Teddy Con! Oh, for the love of God, read the fucking room, people. <laughs> and I'm just like, oh, for the love of God, just read the fucking room. You'll notice that this situation is not, probably not ideal for you. They started collecting money for Teddy Con, but now instead of asking for $110, they are asking or 120 they were asking for, uh, I believe, if I'm not mistaken, they, they were at, no. Normally, TeddyCon tickets are about 100 to 110 or 109. They were asking for like 110, 120, no, 120 to 130 for this new con. Bigger space, better hotel, everything. They, they were all set, right? Little did anyone know, TeddyCon had not spoken to their staff in one year. They had not. They had not spoken to their staff at all. They just announced that they were doing this con and still had not spoken to their staff. The staff had been trying to get them since they announced they weren't doing the con in October of, uh, well, uh, since August of the previous year. They had contact, uh, they had contact up until, the staff had contact with them up until a week before August 15th, and then it was stopped. Then it was announced that they were doing the con at a different spot, 
And then I believe it was November or October of 2020. Uh, I'm doing this off of memory. I could be wrong. I, I read it in, in the, during the podcast. So uh, go back to the podcast episode just to verify what I'm saying. I believe it was either like uh, d- d- um, October, I think it was either October 2020 or November of 2020, contact ceased. They kept trying to contact the TeddyCon head staff or the heads of TeddyCon, the two people that were the heads, and no contact was made. Security, all the tops of, of, of the staff, nobody contacted. Uh, May, around May, when TeddyCon was announced, they straight up were like, yeah, we're doing TeddyCon, it's going to be wonderful, and everyone was excited, because the pandemic seemingly was dying down now that there was a vaccine, and people were excited to get ready to go to this con. However, we were still wearing masks at the time, right? Half of the conven- half of the people at the convention, uh, going to the convention had an issue with wearing masks. We'll get to that in one moment. Let's finish up with staffing. Staffing contacted them uh, continuously up until May. In May, they were told there was a death in the family and that that's why that they didn't have a chance to contact staff and why they hadn't gotten back to them. Staff felt bad. They said, hey, listen, that's okay. Take your time, but please contact us so we know what's going on. Yeah, we'll do that. Radio silence. They didn't speak back to them at all. TeddyCon is still absorbing money for people wanting to go to this convention, and yet no one knows that there isn't any staff. People reserve their rooms. Everything's going on. My input came in again, and I go, I think that TeddyCon should probably read the room. And I think that they are completely missing the ball with this again. We started the year with a pandemic, a seriously bad pandemic that, yes, we have vaccines, but there are still arguments of people taking the fucking vaccine. And there are people who are still getting sick and people are trying to recover, like not just like health wise, but financially, a lot of people were damaged by the pandemic, where they don't have any savings, they don't have a, they don't have a savings, they don't have a death tag or any or any money left. Not even unemployment at this point because it's all drained. So I was like, TeddyCon hosting itself this year is going to have an issue, and because these people have not gained their money back. And Teddy Con was like, we're still doing Teddy Con. How dare you talk against us? Okay. Okay. Yeah, no, that, that's fine. Just don't listen to what I'm saying at all. Because that's going to bite you in the ass hard. And boy, howdy did it. The situation gets real bad. Gets really bad. Because fights start breaking out in the group chats about how... People wanted to know about wearing masks. Was it mandatory? Was it not mandatory? Why do we have to mandatory do masks? That goes against my freedom. That th- There was a bunch of arguments going left and right. And and you even had some, some Trumpers jump up there and start yelling about how the, the virus was a hoax. And I was... I believe I was one person that was like, my cousin died to this virus. Oh, I'm so sorry to hear that. So wait, you're sorry to hear that, but you think that the virus is a hoax, except for when someone tells you that the virus actually killed someone? I was like, that's some backwards motherfucking thinking. (laughs) That's that's when you know that you're... you're, 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 uh, that's when you know that your brain has leaked out and fall and gone into the back of your suddenly wet diaper. So now you're suddenly wet with brain juice, with brain matter and brain juices just leaking in the back, leaking into the back of it, right? <laughs> Making an oatmeal special. Uh, it, this is, this is, oh God, this was stupid. 
so many people wanted to make an argument for why they couldn't wear, didn't have to wear masks or something. I'm not getting into that. That was fucking stupid. And the sheer fact that the con didn't have the wherewithal or the balls to actually tell their con goers, wear a mask when you come to the event. This is a serious matter. We don't want people getting sick. Bam. There you go. See how easy that was? If the uh, if your your pals don't want to do it, okay, then they just don't have to come to the con. And TeddyCon tried to do that because they actually said, well, we'll just push your ticket for the next con then, when it's not mandatory. I, I want a refund! You want a refund for what? For not being able to go to the con! Okay, so you you want a refund for not going to the con, that you are making a sudden choice not to go to the con because of your political view at that point in time. That's on you. Like, okay, give them a refund. Well, we can't really do that. What do you mean you can't do that? We already spent the money. How did you spend the money already? That got me. This is where this shit got me. When they start immediately stated, when th this is two months before the con. Two months. Two months before the con, they were having this argument about whether to wear a mask or not. And this actually went on for two months, right? Why couldn't they give people refunds? That didn't make sense. Well, we have a no refund policy. Okay, but you gave a refund last year for the exact, like, that doesn't make any sense. Well, we spent the money. What the fuck you mean you spent the money? How could you have spent the money? Did you pay the hotel already? That's when I started going, I'm not, mm -mm, something's not right here. <laughs> something's not right here. Two weeks before the con, they go, we're sorry to say we're not having the con this year. Uh, yeah, well, Teddy Con is closing its doors for this. And, and no joke, Teddy Con, straight up. Was like, oh yeah, we're going to push the tickets for the next for the next convention, but there was speculation from people that the owners went bankrupt. How? How did they go bankrupt? And that was the thing that I that confused the fuck out of me. I was like, how did you go bankrupt? There's no way for you to have gone bankrupt that quickly. I was like, and not from this. I says, uh, uh, something's wrong. Something's wrong. And everyone was like, oh, well, you know they go negative $5,000 every year. Negative $5,000? Why? Why do they go negative $5,000? That doesn't make sense. Who are they paying? They don't pay staff because the staff is volunteers. So who, who are they paying? See, that's, that's, that was the thing that didn't fly right with me. Because they have to pay an initial fee. They do. Right? And the hotel, they, they paid the fee for the hotel. What else are they paying for? And and when they said that they spent the money already, then how were you planning to pay for the con? Or did you already pay for the con? There's a rain check clause for some of that shit, too. So what the fuck happened? Now, Teddy Con claimed that the reason they had to cancel the con was because of the fact that they only had 20 people to show up for staff and they need more than 20 people. 20 volunteers. Here's the funny shit about that. They had more than 20 volunteers, they just didn't contact them. And then they, when they did contact them, it was years, it, it was like, it, it was like, what was it, two weeks before the con. Mind you, people have to set up for this. They have to talk to their jobs, plan out, some people have to plan out their vacations. Why the fuck would you think that it's perfectly okay to wait two weeks before the con to ask your staff, are you still coming? Which is why this shit gets really suspicious when you know that back in August they claimed that they had already spoken to staff. Yeah, that's an actual thing. They claimed that they had already spoken to staff. But the sheer radio silence from the original Teddy Con group is fucking ridiculous. That's what it was. It like I so this was shady as fuck to begin with. Okay? It was shady as fuck to begin with. First off, why the flying fuck? Why the flying fuck would you hold a convention, right? 
and not get your staff together first. Staff is number one. How you doing this other shit doesn't make any sense. They claim that they also went to vendors and talked to the vendors. Here's the shit about that. Vendors have to come to the con themselves, right? So they conned stores out of money. This shit doesn't make any sense. But then they, they go, oh, well, well, it wasn't that. We, we uh, it, like, like we said, uh, this could have happened, you know, because, because of the pandemic and everything. Yeah, but that's not why this con ended. You said 20 volunteers, which means that you had more volunteers, but only 20 of them are showing up. And then when someone who was head of security or alleging that they were head of security had spoken, all of the people who worked for TeddyCon, who were heads of something, apparently had been trying to get contact with them the entire fucking time. However, during the time that they were trying to get in contact, guess what uh, uh, the heads of TeddyCon were doing? A little podcast online. Yeah. I happen to have been doing research and somehow popped up this podcast that's dated for August of 2021. Hmm. Okay. So this con so this podcast happened in August of 2021, right? And it the footage doesn't look like it was really edited that much. So, it was just a live podcast. Uh, well, here's the strange part about this. They state that they had vendors and that they had already planned and, and gotten their staff together. And that it was a great undertaking to do this. Then, magically, nothing happened. I'm sorry, but um, my inclinement to believe your bullshit is not very high. I don't believe that, that in the least. I don't think that they had a staff. I do not believe they had a staff. A matter of fact, I not only do not believe they had a staff, I don't believe that they had anybody ready to take over at all. I think that that it was them trying to collect money on the Teddy Con name in order to pay off expenses that they themselves had made or did or some type of financial trouble that they had at some point. Again, this is alleged. This is also my theory of why the fuck what happened happened. I do believe that this ended up somehow turning into Fire Festival. Now, they told everybody, oh, well, there's no way for us to give you the money because we already spent it. Spent it on what? Oh, gotta go by the fuck. So, okay, so there's there's all of this shit and no explanation as to why the fuck this thing is the way it is. Okay, fine. So what do we do? How do we fix it, right? They don't. They go into radio silence after announcing that they only had ten people ready for the con and that they weren't doing the con that year. They literally went radio silent after announcing the cancellation of the con, then announced uh, that they couldn't do it because they only had 10 people, uh, 20 people uh, to volunteer and they need more people, and gone. We have not heard from them any uh, ever since. Until 2022, March of 2022, when it was announced that they were closing their doors for good. Now, that's fucking suspicious. Uh, they decided that they were closing their doors for good. TeddyCon would no longer be in operation. However, you can remember all the great times we had together. Does anyone else smell bullshit? Because I smell bullshit. And this brings me to my conclusion. I asked one simple question when I first started. Was it right for the community to trust TeddyCon? After everything that went down, after everything that I can actually explain and talk about, 
after everything that I have already said is a testimonial and alleged, right? My truest conclusion is, no. No. No, you shouldn't have trusted Tenicon. Not at all. None of us should have. None of us should have done it. And the reason why we shouldn't have done it is, they, over the years, have proved time and time again of incompetence, of favoritism, of biasness, misogyny, and fucking ridiculousness. And, like, and as if we were watching the circus show, we as a community just sat there and looked at it. And we're like, oh, no, it's fine. Yeah, it's fine. It's not fine. It's not right. It was all wrong. Everything about it was wrong. Not a single part of it was done correctly. And I truly believe that had people known about the things that had taken place before and prior, that a lot of people in the community would not have trusted Teddy Com with their money. As they should have not done. They should not have trusted Teddy Con with their money. Because Teddy Con did nothing with that money except use it for their own selfish reasons. In the long run. Now, did was every con like this? No. Like I said, 2019 was smooth other than the three fucking uh, events. Instead of, uh, and then like using their their capability to just smash down hard on everyone, it made no sense. It was a popularity contest in which everyone was sniffing their own fucking farts and claiming their shit didn't stink. It was stupid. Like, I'm, I'm sorry, but, but this is the dumbest thing I've ever heard. I'm sorry that your fucking stupidity was contagious, apparently, and your white knighters don't have enough fucking common sense to actually realize of what the fucking problems actually are. To have a convention, to have a group of people gain the trust of the f people who... This community strives to try to make safe and and happy. To have events that actually happen, right? To put in the effort to fix and design things for the community for things to go perfect. They were betrayed and treated like shit. And treated like they were terrible people. I cannot stress enough about how the people were treated when they stated about their hardships that they're having. How badly they felt that they felt conned by Teddy Con. And they didn't want to feel like that. What did the Teddy Con, the friends of Teddy Con, you know, the ones that were in the popular crowd do? What did the really rich and, and I can't say it because there is no person of color in the group that jumped in and said anything like this. It was only, like, pretty much, pretty much the Teddy Con close crowd who went up there and bullied and made fun of, of people who are now homeless. They made fun of them. Talked about how, oh, maybe you shouldn't have spent your money on TeddyCon. <laughs> I use my lottery money. I'm not joking. That actually is a comment that is in that group. If you go into the TeddyCon group and actually look at the, the conversation, I forget the name of the person that actually did it, but it was like, it's called like In Light Of, or it's like In Light Of the Situation or something like that. But go, yeah, go and read some of that. Uh, it's on Fat Life in the TeddyCon group. It's fucking insane. Some of the people in that group have written some horrendous shit. Oh my god. There was a mommy dom that actually is, like, like uh, well-known in the community who has some accusations against her labeled, uh, uh well, <laughs> there's some accusations of actual physical abuse by this woman. Apparently. Again, remember it's alleged. That was alleged against her by the head of TeddyCon. But she's over there defending them like nothing happened. 
Like, supposedly it was some type of fucking abuse about cheating. I don't know. It's some stupid shit. But the, the point is, is that she is, she was literally, like, congratulating people for saying some evil shit towards these people who are going through a lot of hardships, who are going through problems. But it's perfectly okay, because they should know better than to talk bad about Teddy Khan. Because they don't know what type of things that Teddy Khan has to do in order to make things good for them, good for everybody. They should just remember the good times. Well, which ones were the good times, exactly? I just named a whole bunch of shit that wasn't the good times. Hmm. I don't know what to say on that. My whole thing is, it's just that I feel that the community was duped. I feel like they were double-crossed and, 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 and... It was spit in the like they they had they they had their face spat in. Now, I'm not going to speculate for anything else. However, I'm what I'm going to say is, I want to bring up in my conclusion about Casey, about the head of ABU, buying out all the licensing and whatever for TeddyCon, buying it all out to host his own convention. I have something to say. Casey, if you are watching this, I want you to hear my words carefully. Because what I'm about to say is very important. I believe in you. I 100% believe in you. Let me explain why I believe in you. Why I believe in Casey. Back in 2014, 20, between 2014 and 2015, there was a, uh, a case where I have explained this about the ABU story, about the old owner of ABU who ran out with everybody's money and shit. When Casey bought the company, he brought the company back, and he did it on a dream and a prayer. And he was able to bring it back. And one of the things that Casey said was, is we will strive to make things right. He kept his promise. He kept his promise. He made things right. People who didn't receive their, their orders for two years got their orders. I've spoken to him. I've spoken to you, Casey. You and I have had close conversation. There is no one in this community that loves it more than me, and, uh, and is, that's me being conceited. Except for you. You love this community even probably more than I do. I view this community as a family. You view this community as closer to your heart than anything I've ever seen. You are a wonderful person, and I 100% believe in you. I think you have this. I think you're good. I would also state, I if I was you, right, take, move away from Teddy Khan as far as, fuck, as, far as fucking you can. Move the fuck away from TeddyCon. And what I mean by that is, take the assets and use it for something else. Don't let the shadow of TeddyCon stay where it was. You and I both know the issues that TeddyCon had. We both know the problems. Everyone knows the issues we're looking for it to be better and i guarantee goddamn to you if anyone can do it it's you please by all means erase teddy con from the face of existence use the assets and everything that you just got out of it and create a brand new con another thing i would actually suggest is Think of a place in the East Coast that would be widely available. The problem with TeddyCon was that 
to get there, you really needed to drive or fly. And flying was not a very viable uh, viable way of getting there. It just wasn't. And there was a whole bunch of issues that, that like, came up because people could not make it to TeddyCon without driving or flying. My suggestion, my full-on suggestion, would be to either move it to Philly or New York City. A lot of people are going to be like, well, why the fuck New York City? I'll explain. New York City is accessible by train, airplane, or bus. And it is vastly and widely affordable, depending on where you are, I think. But it's usually widely affordable. Hotels in New York, on the other hand, might be a bit of an issue. However, not every hotel is $1,000. You have good hotels that are not a thousand dollars, and I think you can definitely do a lot with that. However, let's get back to let's let's jump back to another viable area, Philadelphia. Philadelphia is not a bad place to have it. I think Philly would be a great place to do it. Right now. Some folks will actually probably say something along the lines of, well, why didn't you say Pittsburgh? And I'll explain why. Pittsburgh is not a bad place to have it. However, Pittsburgh has a bit of an issue as far as transportation goes. I will say that. It does have an issue of transportation. And the transportation issue, hear me out on this, is that you can get to Pittsburgh by train but only if you're coming from like atlanta you have to like take the train all the way up to like washington dc philadelphia and then transfer to a different train to come all the way back the fuck down that's that's expensive that's really fucking expensive and it's like going to georgia uh, going to georgia on train is not easy either because Shit. That's like a day trip. The only thing that I say, I will state is, choose a place that is a more centralized area that people can do. New York is not bad. Pennsylvania is not bad. Right? Those two places are very viable. Some people were saying Washington, D.C. I think that's a terrible idea. I actually do think that's a terrible idea. Because that's not as widely available as you may think. You still have to take a multitude of trains in order to to get there. So, if you're coming from Pittsburgh, you have to go all the way to Philly. And then from Philly, you have to take a train to to Washington, D.C. Washington, D.C. is not cheap on hotels whatsoever. I know this because I go to Katsukon. Let me tell you something. When you're paying $1,000 a weekend, it fucking sucks. It's, yeah. It is, oh, Jesus, yeah, don't, don't, don't do that, don't do TeddyCon there, don't, if you're going to do uh, any type of convention anywhere, I would say either New York City or Philadelphia, Boston might be a viable place, I guess, but you would still have to transfer trains, because if you're coming from Pennsylvania, you have to go to New York and then transfer in New York. Yeah, it's that's 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 gonna be that's a rough trip, and and uh, a trip from New York City from Pittsburgh to New York is eight hours, so yeah, so mm 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 not a good idea. I would say the best centralized area would be, um, would definitely have to be right there in uh in Philadelphia, or you could do it in um, New York, or Jersey. Jersey's not a bad place to do it, because you can actually get to Jersey pretty easily. Just make sure that it's still within the, the, the train line, and you should be fine. But, like, yeah, that's that's the cold hard truth, guys. Like, we want an available place to actually be able to host this con. But a lot of people's fear is that it's not going to be on the East Coast anymore. 
and I I can understand that fear. I can get that. But again, I trust Casey, and I believe in him, and I know what he would do is actually right. Okay, I've gone way over time. I tried to make this as short as possible, but the short as I could make it was an hour. Thank you for joining me here for the Kinonk Fat Vlogs. Thank you so much for supporting the show, and I just wanted to say thank you for taking the time to listen to all three of these parts. Um, yeah, so it, it's it's been a journey. It's been a journey. So we will we will see each other again in the next episode, uh, whenever that is. <laughs> Have a good morning. Good night. Hello there. This is the end of the segment. So, a um, couple of messages. Just want to get these out there real quick. Um, thank you so much for supporting our series, supporting our channel, and supporting the series, and just being really, really awesome. We really appreciate you. Uh, I just wanted to let you guys know a couple of things. First, uh, if you're not subscribed, please press the subscribe button down below. Uh, it's good to know that there are people that are very much interested. Leave us a like, comment. We always love reading the comments. You guys leave awesome comments. So, yeah. Thank you, again. Um, here's the other thing. Uh, for the newbies. So, a lot of you are probably here for the Age Play podcast a lot. Oh, did you know that we do other series? Yeah. So we have three other series that we do here on this channel. It's the Kid Onk Age Play, uh, Gaming and Age Play, which is a really awesome series where we basically just play video games and talk about kink. Um, majorly topics pertaining to age play, though. Uh, then we have the Kid Onk uh, Playtime Livestream, where I play with action figures and answer your questions uh yeah those that's a really awesome q a series that really gets me able to communicate with everyone uh and last but not least the kid on fat blocks this is the series that i started when i first got here so um this series is freaking awesome i i still love doing these essays where i talk about the community and my journey through it and my commentary about the things that I've learned over the years and what I see and things that I feel like could change and things that I can open people's eyes on if they when when they if they would just look at the different situations so yeah 100 percent please 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 subscribe like and leave a comment below it really does let us know that that you're listening uh you guys are awesome Thank you so much for all your support and all your help. We wouldn't have made it here 10 years without you. You guys are amazing. I love you all. Bye.